Hey guys, welcome back to Rumorg TV. I am Rumorg Executive Editor Andrea Subasati, and if you haven't yet subscribed to Rumorg Magazine, I've got a giveaway going on if you subscribe between now and Halloween. I'll show you what it is, but you gotta wait till the end of this episode. I'll see you then. Welcome to Rumorg TV. My name's Laura Hawkstead. I'm a tarot card reader and an intern here at Rumorg TV. And this is another episode of Terror Tarot, where we look at the use of tarot cards in horror movies. And today we're going to be looking at Peter Jackson's 1992 horror comedy, Brain Dead, or Dead Alive. Dead Alive, or as you might know it, Brain Dead, is uh, a film that came out in 1992 and it has two working titles, um, specifically in the United States, because there was already a movie called Brain Dead that was out at the time, so Peter Jackson had to change it to Dead Alive for the release in the United States. The movie is about Lionel and his overbearing mother who is bitten by a Sumatran rat monkey and goes on to kill and infect everyone in her neighborhood, such as nurses, priests, dogs, babies, and anyone that kind of gets in her way. Early on in the film, we meet Paquita, and she is getting a tarot card reading from her mother. Shuffle the cards. Hi, Paquita. Good morning, Roger. We will see if you and Roger are destined to be together. And in this reading, um, her mother pulls three cards for her that um, kind of foreshadow and prophesy what's to come in the movie. And the first card that her mother pulls for her is the Queen of Cups. And her mother tells her that this is meant to be her. And um, as the movie goes, you really get to know Paquita as somebody who is very intuitive. She kind of anticipates things before it happens. She's very caring. And um, one of the definitions of this card is being emotionally stable. And we really see her as that strong, stable person throughout the whole movie. The next card that comes up is the Knight of Swords. And her mother tells her that this is going to be her love. And the Knight of Swords as a person would be somebody who is very brave, headstrong, the first one kind of into the battle. When we see on the card that there is a knight rushing forward, you see the wind is blowing through his horse's hair, the clouds are moving in the background, you see a sense of movement forward here for him. So those are some characteristics of that card. Now, as we progress in the film, we learn that um, her love interest is Lionel. And um, as we see him at the beginning of the film, he is quite nervous, anxious, awkward. He um, is in a very uh, abusive relationship with his overbearing mother. So at first, this card doesn't really seem to fit with him and him as a character. Um, but I have a feeling that as the movie goes, we might see a little bit of that Knight of Swords energy come up with Lionel. The last card that she pulls is the Star card. Now, I should mention that the deck that they're using in the scene is the Toth Tarot deck that was created by famed occultist and magician and poet and novelist Aleister Crowley. Um, they did have to change the imagery on that card for this scene. Originally, the card has a woman leaning over pouring water into a pond. But in the Toth Tarot deck, you see kind of more geometric shapes of the same image, but it's all about kind of this like connection to water and this flowing of energy. When she pulls that card in the scene, we see it um, as a different shape. The imagery on the tarot card in the scene um, is very specific and we will actually see that same symbol come up multiple times in the film. So it's a bit of foreshadowing there. The last card that um, we see a glimpse of um, in her tarot reading is actually the Ten of Wands. And the word oppression is underneath in the Toth tarot deck. Um, so her mother doesn't really want to get into the meaning of this card and she kind of just brushes it off. Um, but this card is the, the card that represents oppression, being held down, um, something holding you back. And um, as we go in the film, I believe that this card is foreshadowing her learning about Lionel's dysfunctional relationship with his mother, because in that sense, he is quite oppressed by her. He's bossed around by her, and um, we'll get into that a little bit more later on. During his tarot card reading uh, with Paquita's mom, she also gives him a necklace um, that has 
uh, amulet on it that is in the same shape as the tarot card that we saw at the beginning of the movie. Paquita returns to the storefront to meet Lionel. And coming off of this tarot reading, she is ready to find love. And it's the first guy she lays her eyes on. And she's like, oh, this must be the guy that my tarot reading um, predicted. So she's right away enamored by him. So he gets nervous. He ends up spilling um, a bunch of pencils on the table. And when we pan out, we see the same shape that the tarot card had in the previous scene. So Paquita really does at this point take this as a for sure sign. This is her guy. Um, and she comes on a little strong, but um, I feel like that might be something that Lionel might be into. <laughs> So after that, Lionel kind of runs away. We see him return home. And this is the first time we really get a sense of the relationship that he has with his mother. Oh, God! Look at the state of this place! She's going on about how she's just won some award and she's going to have people over. So the house needs to be perfect. Lionel had just mowed the lawn, he says, which is also foreshadowing for an amazing scene at the end. And, uh, but it wasn't good enough. So you get this sense that, yeah, everything Lionel does just isn't good enough in his mother's eyes. So every step of the way, Lionel's mother interferes with him in some way. So when we saw earlier on that tarot card come up that uh, represented oppression, we see this in um, all, of her, all of her interactions with him. And she even goes so far as to follow him to the zoo when he goes on a date with Paquita. While she's kind of lurking in the bushes, spying on her son, she is bitten by a rat monkey that has made its way to the zoo from Skull Island, which is a really cool little Easter egg, especially if you're a big Peter Jackson fan, because you will know that years later he will return to Skull Island for King Kong. So he was really working on the King Kong uh, connected universe even back in 92. So after Lionel's mother is bitten, she becomes very ill and he has to take her home. And so he's taking care of her. Her condition gets worse and worse. And when Lionel goes to check on her the following day, she is definitely not herself. Her skin is decaying. There's a really awesome scene where people are eating and some pus falls into some soup. So this is definitely not a movie that I would recommend watching while eating, or you could. So from here, uh, we see her um, really start to deteriorate. She goes on a killing spree. You know, it's really hard for Lionel to kind of keep her in line. He keeps going to the store um, to buy tranquilizers for her to just keep her sedated enough so that she's not causing more mayhem and running amok and leaving a trail of blood everywhere she goes. In between all of this, Lionel keeps running into Paquita at the most inopportune times. Paquita's starting to feel a little bit um, jaded, you know? He hasn't been around as much, he's not talking to her, she's feeling hurt. But she does invite him over for a tarot reading of his own with her mother because she's very concerned about him. So in this scene, we don't really get a close up on any of the cards that come up but her mother does warn him that death is on the way for him. And the death card traditionally in tarot actually is a, a pretty positive card. It means the beginning of something new. So going, letting go of any limiting beliefs or anything that was holding you back in the past to start fresh. So it's just all about cycles. So after death comes rebirth. I think for this specific scene and the way that the mother is approaching him about it, this is meant more to uh, foreshadow the death and destruction that will come out of the rest of the movie. So the next scene that we see is um, his mother's funeral. While the priest is giving the eulogy, uh, Lionel is uh, busy with the coffin trying to sedate his undead mother once again because he does not want her coming out and uh, causing problems at her funeral, which is exactly what she does. And it results in an epic fight between Lionel and the priest in which he says an amazing line. I kick ass for the Lord. <laughs> Just the best. <laughs> Yes! 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 Yes!
The movie really snowballs from there in terms of the amount of blood, violence, and death. His uncle has found that Lionel has been keeping some of the undead people of the town in the basement. Paquita kind of talks some sense into him that, you know, this isn't his mother anymore. These people aren't who they used to be. So instead of tranquilizing them, he should probably just poison them um, to put them out of their misery. So after burying all of the bodies in the basement, Lionel and Paquita come upstairs and really just try their best to enjoy the party. But what Lionel didn't know was that the poison he fed the undead wasn't actually poison. And now they have risen once again with a new level of energy that they didn't have before. They are really out for blood this time. And when I say blood, I mean blood. This scene is so bloody. For this scene alone, five gallons of blood were pumped out per second. <laughs> we also see the return of the lawnmower that was kind of foreshadowed earlier in the film in um, used in a really efficient way um, that I couldn't have imagined. <laughs> and we finally see Lionel's mother transform into this kind of gigantic, bloated, rat, monkey, slash mom, um, and she's on the roof and she's attacking Paquita. And Paquita is holding on for dear life at the edge of the roof. And it's at this moment that Lionel really steps up and he screams at his mother to stop. And now we see the final showdown between mother and son. It's a great callback to earlier in the film when we saw the Knight of Swords card. And that card represented somebody that Lionel really wasn't at the beginning of the movie, but throughout all of his trials, he's really become that Knight of Swords energy. At this point, his mother opens up her stomach and pulls him in to always be together. And we think really that's it for Lionel until he uses the star amulet to cut his way back out, killing his mother, and in the end, saving Paquita and himself. <laughs> Overall, I would give this movie a thumbs up uh, for their use of tarot cards in film and using them accurately. What's really unique too about the um, carryover of the imagery of the star card from the beginning scene to when Paquita and Lionel first meet and we see that symbol on the table to him finally using that amulet to really cut himself free and cut himself from the mom. All of that is really encompassing the meaning of the star card in tarot, which is all about renewal and starting fresh and really having a second chance and rebirth and um, so the fact that he's using that symbol to literally cut himself out of his mother is, um, is very true to the meaning. I really do like the growth that we see in Lionel, um, that he really truly does kind of encompass that Knight of Swords by the end of the film. Also, this is really a, um, an amazing love story above anything else. Um, the relationship that Lionel and Paquita have is incredible. She's so intuitive and supportive of him in all of his issues that he has throughout this film. Um, she's very patient and, uh, and you can really see their love grow. And at the end, when the mother is defeated and they just take each other in their arms, it really feels like a happily ever after. So that does it for another episode of Terror Tarot on Roomorg TV. Please remember to like and subscribe for more of this content and leave a comment below if uh, you have other films that you'd like us to talk about or if you have any thoughts on the cards and how we interpreted them today. Um, so tune in next time and we'll see what's in the cards. Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that episode, but back to our subscription giveaway. If you were to subscribe to the magazine between now and October 31st, you will be entered to win a copy of Horror Movie Monsters by Dave Alexander. It's volume 12 in our Room Org Library series, and they are in short supply. So be sure to subscribe using the link that I'll drop in the description below, and you'll be entered to win. See you next time. It's like once I'm talking about the thing that I know, I can't introduce myself, but I can talk about tarot cards. Intro the and when somebody's like, hi, tell me about yourself, and you're like, I'm a, a human, human. <laughs> yeah.